Welcome. This is Empowering Introductory Algebra. I'm Bob Young, Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Bavard Community College. With the help of my superb support staff of WBCC, we continue to bring you introductory algebra lessons in an easy to understand, upbeat format and have fun doing it. We will also incorporate important study skills to ensure your success in all of our mathematics courses while at BCC and beyond. Let's continue our journey. Now, in the previous um, three lessons, we talked about the real number system, and we started getting our signs straight, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing those real numbers, and we looked at lots of examples, and we left off in the middle of some properties, so that's where we're going to pick it up in this lesson, and we're going to go to our graphic that we left off at, basic properties of real numbers. And one, identity for addition, the concept, anything plus zero equals itself, and the identity for multiplication concept, anything multiplied by one gives you itself as well. So looking at some examples here, we started out with the example for identity for addition, anything plus zero is itself. In this case, five plus zero is five. It works for variables, x plus zero equals x. A times B times C plus zero gives us A times B times C. And the identity property for multiplication, Anything times one, whether it be numerical or variable, comes out to be itself. All right. Continuing our properties in the next graphic, we're going to talk about inverse properties. The inverse for addition, anything added to its opposite is zero. The inverse for multiplication states, anything times its reciprocal equals one. So looking at some examples of that, also notice the inverse property for addition is called the additive inverse property. So if we take some numbers, 8, and add its opposite, any number plus its opposite gives us 0. So the word inverse sometimes is used in this context for opposite. Or if we have negative y plus y, we get 0. So the concept there, anything plus its opposite is 0. And when it comes to multiplication, if you take a number, let's say, 3 fourths and multiply it by its reciprocal, now the reciprocal is just taking the fraction and flipping it over, 4 thirds, you get 1. And you can think about our cross cancellation or chop chop hush, hush, on the 4s and on the 3s going back and forth here to cross cancel to give you 1. Or, for example, if you take the number 7 and multiply by its reciprocal, which would be 1 7 the answer comes out to be one as well. So the inverse property for addition, the inverse property for multiplication. Now on the next graphic, we're going to talk about a very important property here, the multiplication property of negative one and the multiplication property of zero. Now the multiplication property of negative one says that anything multiplied by negative one gives you its opposite. So looking back at some examples here, if we take negative 1 times 8, multiplying anything by a negative just changes its sign. We end up with negative 8. A negative 12 multiplied by negative 1 makes that come out a positive 12. Now notice in parentheses here, we have one of our properties we discussed in the last lesson. This is called the distributive property. We're going to take this negative and distribute it through the two terms here. So in reality, there's really a negative one outside the parentheses, although it's not written. I call this the hidden one. The hidden one. So when you take it and distribute it, all the signs in the parentheses change, leaving us with a negative 8x minus 4. And this concept continues in the next two examples here. So taking the negative sign and distributing it through changes all the signs in here. It's like multiplying by negative 1. And if it helps you, put that negative 1 there. So a negative times a positive from previous lessons gives us a negative 2x. 
negative times a positive, minus 3y or negative 3y, negative times a negative, plus 4. All right? And the same thing goes for the last example here, a negative times a negative, positive 8a, plus 6b, distributing through, and then a minus 49. So just like in the past, the sign rules are holding when we multiply positive and negatives together. All right, now going back to the graphic real quick here, the multiplication property of um, zero here, I really like. Anything multiplied by zero gives you, you know what, zero. So looking at some examples here, and I love to fool students on tests. This is kind of dirty pool of me, but I'll take negative five, or I'm sorry, negative four times five times a fraction three fourths times point zero seven, and really try to get them psyched. And then over here times zero, all that for not, all that work for nothing. So anything times zero, even if you're talking distributing zero through, gives you zero. So some of the names of the properties actually tell what the properties entitle. All right, in the next graphic, we're going to discuss order of operations. And this is going to further test our signs. Order of operations indicates the order in which you do a problem. And a way to remember this phrase is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Always do order of operations from left to right. And in the next graphic, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally means what's in parentheses do first. E means exponent or powers always do second. Multiplication and division, whichever comes first, do first. So for example here, negative or 12 divided by 4 times 3 here, do you see that if you multiply first versus divide first, your answers will be totally different. So when it comes to multiplication and division from left to right, whichever comes first, do first. And then moving down here, always add and subtract last. All right, so let's go to some examples with that. Now, before we talk about, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, order of operations, let's look at the exponential notation format here. Now, whenever you have something in exponential notation, a to the seventh power, the a is called the base, and the seven is called the exponent. And what that means, a to the seventh, is you take a and multiply it out seven times. And boy, I really like to see this on test grades. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a times a times a times a and so forth. So with some examples of that, 3 to the third power, a lot of students here will be confused and say that's 9, when in reality it's 3 multiplied together 3 times, which gives us a total of 27. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. So I'm just writing this in expanded form and then evaluating. All right. Now, what is confusing also to some students is the example on the bottom here, 10x to the fourth power, means this. It means 10 times x times x times x times x. Only the x is being raised to the fourth power here, not the 10. So be very careful with something like this when you go to write it out. And in the next segment here, here's what I mean. I call them tricky exponents. Now, students hate these, but don't worry about it. If you're careful, you'll be all right. So in other words, there's a huge difference between something in parentheses versus something not in parentheses. So when we say negative 2 raised to the second power in parentheses, it means negative 2 times negative 2, and we get a positive 4. But when there's the negative that's outside of the parentheses here, there's no parentheses, this negative sign is like sticking its tongue out at the 2. Nah, 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 you can't touch me. I have young kids at home, forgive me. So you end up with negative 2 times 2. Only the 2 is being squared here, which gives you an answer of negative 4. Now, these little things drive students crazy, but these are the things you really have to master in order to uh, be successful. And with that same logic here, negative 1 raised to the fourth power in parentheses becomes a positive 1, while negative 1 to the fourth power with no parentheses is a negative one. 
Sometimes students take that negative one to the fourth power and it's almost like there's a hidden one out there. It's almost like you have a negative one times one to the fourth power. And that gives you that answer. So huge difference between parentheses and non-parentheses when it comes to exponents. And now on the bottom, notice when the power is odd, it doesn't matter. So with negative two to the third power, we have negative two times negative two times negative two, which gives us a negative eight. There's the old even odd sign rule. When there's an odd number of um, negative signs and you're multiplying, you get a negative answer. Whereas here, we have negative two multiplied together three times, so we still end up with negative eight there. So in this case, with an odd power, it really didn't affect the way the answer came out, whereas the even-powered examples are the ones where I label them tricky exponents, beware. Another concept of order of operations which I want to talk about is the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally part I mentioned earlier. Now this is the example I had up on the graphic, so make sure in left to right order, you do the division first followed by the multiplication. Some people say because my comes before dear and my dear Aunt Sally, you should multiply always before divide, but that's not right. So I'm making that a huge point here. Lump these together, do whichever comes first. All right. And in this next example here, six times two, we would do that first since it comes first from left to right would be 12 divided by three, and that gives us four. Okay. So what we want to do is we really want to strengthen your signs. I mean, at this point, boy, when you do these order of operation signs, we are going to test your sign ability. You're going to be doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You're going to have exponents involved, parentheses involved. So toward the um, end of this uh, lesson here, if you can comprehend and, and do what's required, you are really going to be on your way. All right, so let's go to some examples, some more examples of order of operations. And we'll go ahead and see how we're doing here. So looking at this first example, 12 minus 2 times 4 minus 5, Aunt Sally would say, do the multiplication first. So this would give us 12. Negative 2 times 4 gives us a minus 8 minus 5. So multiplication was the highest order going across here done before the subtraction, which gives us now, adding and subtracting last, I would go ahead and add these two negatives together first, even though they're in a subtraction format. Same signs, add the numbers, and you get negative 13 here, and then your 12 is out in front, so putting the negative 8 and negative 5 together, we get negative 13, different signs, subtract, sign of the larger number, negative 1, final answer. All right, next example, going from left to right. Now, do I do division or multiplication first? Left to right. Division and multiplication have that same order. See, so if you go doing the wrong one, you are in some deep trouble here. So 6 divided by 2 gives us 3 times 3 minus 4 plus 2. And don't try to skip steps. Sometimes I have students do these. They try to go from here to the answer, and I can kind of hear them falling down the canyon oh, poof, until they hit the bottom. So you have to be kind of careful when you're doing these. Write out the steps. 3 times 3, then, you do the multiplication before any addition and subtractions. 9 minus 4 plus 2. So if you do order of operations correctly, you should end up, in most cases, with an addition or subtraction statement. So the commutative property says it doesn't matter which ones we add or subtract together first here. We'll get 9 minus 4 is 5 plus 2 is the final answer of 7 for those. So lots of signs going on in these order of operation problems. All right, more examples. Now I'm going to try to throw the kitchen sink at you here as far as order of operations go. Now in this next example here, we should do what's in the parentheses first. Now you might say, Young, what do we do in the parentheses first? Well, what, what do you do on order of operations? Let's go back to the graphic. Do you do multiplication or do you do subtraction first? And remember, these graphics are for you to write notes and examples down and so forth and keep them in your organized notebook. We talked about those study tips earlier. So, Notice that the uh, M, multiplication, comes before any addition or subtractions. So getting back to the example here, 
3 times 5 is 15 minus 7. That's still inside the parentheses now, and we'll bring down the 9. So we have 9 minus 15 minus 7. So we still need to get out of this parentheses by doing the subtraction in here. So what we end up with is 9 minus 8. And now we have broken out of the parentheses, and we can write the final answer of, of 1. Okay. Next example, a couple parentheses, this one with an exponent on it. So again, do what's inside the parentheses first. That's the P, and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 8 minus 6 is 2 to the third power, and then 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. So this is what we're left with in the second step. Now, Aunt Sally would say next, do the exponents here before you do the multiplication. So 2 to the third, now don't say 6, be careful. It's 2 times 2 times 2, so this would be 8 times negative 2. And that would give us a total of negative 16. So, boy, will these strengthen your sign rules, adding, subtracting, multiplying, doing them in the correct order. Yeah, good stuff here. All right, and moving down the page, they might even try to slip you the old division bar here. Do not be afraid because this division bar means what operation in algebra? It's just another way to say division. So going across from left to right, we have some division, addition, multiplication, division. We're going to go ahead and do this division first since it comes first. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3 plus the 12 we're going to leave alone here right now. So we're going to have plus 12 times 2 is going to be, do the multiplication before the division here. So maybe I should just go ahead and do that since I'm running out of paper. Plus 24 divided by 6. All right, so we went ahead from left to right. We did this division first. We did this multiplication. Now we're down to this step. I guess what we get to do from here, the addition or the division, Division takes the higher priority. So this will be negative 3 plus 24 divided by 6 is 4, giving us another answer of 1. Hey, isn't that neat how I make up these problems? See, I had two 1s on the same page. What are the odds? Maybe we should go out and buy a lottery ticket. I don't know. All right, continuing. They get even more fun. Order of operations. All right. Now, notice here we've got some multiplication, subtraction, parentheses, and then I threw the old brackets in here. Now, brackets mean the same thing as parentheses, and we'll talk more about that as we go along. So I would say do what's in the brackets and parentheses first, going from left to right, and don't skip any steps. So we'll write 8 times 3 squared minus 4 minus 6 gives us a negative 2 plus... 3 minus negative 9, there's that old double negative property that means change that minus a negative 2 addition, which is really 3 plus 9, so this bracket comes out to be 12. All right. Now the next step, we've got some multiplication, exponent, subtraction, and minus a negative here. Ooh, look at that double negative property twice there, plus 12. So Young's really trying to bust your chops now. He's like, these daggone math teachers are trying to get me. But anyway, I would go ahead and do the um, exponent next. So we'll have that's 8 times 3 squared is 9. That minus a negative 2 will go ahead and change to plus 2, plus 12. So we're almost there. All right, so the 8 times 9 then, doing the multiplication next before this addition over here, gives us 72 plus 2 plus 12 gives us 74 plus 12. Let me show some steps here, and that comes out to be 86 for that one. So a lot of good problem solving in one of these order of operation problems. All right, going down the line here, here's one with fractions. Let me go ahead and separate this a little bit. So I know the audience out there loves fractions. It just wouldn't be right without doing fractional ones. So let's take a few of these. Again, do what's inside the parentheses first. So 6 minus 4 is going to give us 2 plus 2 squared divided by 5 minus 9. Now, different signs subtract. That's going to give us a negative 4 raised to the third power. Now, notice the parentheses stays on that negative 4, but since that's an odd power, it really is not going to matter because it's going to be negative 4 three times, which will give us a negative 64 on the bottom. Now, what do we do next, Young? Well, Aunt Sally would say do the exponents next. So we're going to have 2 
plus 2 squared is 4 all over a negative 64, which gives us 6 over a negative 64. Now, does that fraction reduce? I think so. And what number reduces it? Well, I think both top and bottom, since they're even numbers, are divisible by 2. So in order to reduce a fraction, you just need to find a common number that reduces into the top and bottom. So that's going to leave us with 3 over a negative 32 for the final answer there. Negative 3 over 32. Okay. And now, notice I've got empowering order of operations. He's trying to go to the most vicious examples that any textbook would throw at you here. So don't be scared. You know what they say, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And BCC Network here, we don't back down from tough problems. We just accelerate. We go after them. You know, a lot of instructors, they work the easy ones and they say, oh, that's all right. You can get the rest of them on your own. But we don't back down from any problems here. We want to go after and show you from the easiest examples to the most difficult and then everything in between. So let's go back and tackle these last two beasts here. So in this one, I would go ahead and look at the top and bottom as separate things here. Again, we're going to do these exponents. Now, I'm trying to see if you remember some things we talked about. 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is going to start out 8. Minus 4 squared. Now, what kind of a 16 is this going to be? Is it going to be positive or is it going to be a minus 16? Is there any parentheses here? I see no parentheses. So that negative is not being affected by that square. That's going to leave us a minus 16 here, huge concept. Plus, now notice I slipped in one with the parentheses. That's squared. That's negative times negative, giving us a positive 9 over here. So huge differences here and here. Be careful. On the bottom, do the parentheses first. That's going to give us 8 minus 12. Different signs subtract smaller from larger. Sign of the larger number, negative 4, plus 12, divided by 3 plus 2. Write out some steps. Don't skip them. I mean, if you skip steps, you could be in trouble. All right, so on the um, bottom here, we still have to do that division before any additions and subtractions, which we're saving till last. We'll go ahead and add and subtract the top, so. So this is going to be a positive 8 and a positive 9 is a positive 17 minus 16 is going to give me a 1 in the numerator. 12 divided by 3, doing this division here, is going to give us a 4. And we end up with a negative 4 plus 4 plus 2 gives us a total of 2 in the bottom. So this big, gargantuan, ugly-looking beast that we started with simply came out, if we did our order of operations right, to the simple, humble fraction of 1 half. All right, so don't look at these and be intimidated. Okay, next example. Notice I threw something from the uh, first lesson in, the absolute value there. Now, a lot of students will miss this concept. If you subtract an absolute value here, this is not the double negative property, so be careful. So we're going to go ahead first and do what's in parentheses, starting with the 8, working our way over. 16 minus 30, different sign subtract, sign of the larger number. That's going to come out a negative 14 minus the absolute value of a negative 12 comes out positive 12. So there is no double negative property here. That only holds when you have minus a negative something there. So be careful. So now this bracket is treated like parentheses. We end up with minus 14 minus 12. We get 8 times a negative 26. And We'll go ahead and multiply that out over here real quick. So 26 times 8, I get 208, which should come out to be a negative 208. Final answer. Okay. So do not be afraid of the more difficult problems. Now let's go back to the graphics for a minute. So going to our last graphic, like terms contain the same variables to the same power. So we're going to tie in like terms with order of operations. To collect like terms, add the numbers coefficients in front of each term. So let's look at some examples of that. And 
In this, we have, we're going to go ahead, when we collect like terms, we're going to add our A's with our A's, B's with our B's, and numbers with our numbers. So like terms, same variables to the same power. So I'm going to go ahead and underline the A's in red here, and we're going to end up with negative 3A plus 5A, different sign, subtract sign of the larger number, positive 2A. For the B's, we've got 9B, I'll underline those twice, minus 4B, which gives us a plus 5B. And then the numbers in green here, we've got negative 5 and negative 9. Same signs add, put the sign is going to give us a negative 14 or minus 14 for the answer there. All right, so when you collect like terms, you're kind of undistributing here. You, if you, on that A part, if we have negative 3A plus 5A and you're adding like terms, the distributive property says we can rewrite that in this fashion, factoring out an A or taking an A out. So that's what allows us to say that's 2a there. So add these coefficients or numbers in front. Now in our next example, order of operations here, before we go collecting like terms or adding and subtracting, notice we've got a distribution to make here. So we've got to start with that negative 5 and multiply it. So before we do anything else, order of operations, remember Aunt Sally here. So 8 plus 6x minus 3y plus 2x, now distributing that negative 5 through, negative 5x plus 5y minus 10. All right, so you must multiply before performing any addition or subtractions. Now, in collecting like terms here, let's get all of our x's underlined. We'll go with the red here. Notice we've got a whole bunch of them. So I say underline things so you don't miss them. 6x plus 2x, 8x minus 5x, positive 3x. In green, I'm going to get the y's. Negative 3y plus 5y is a plus 2y. And then the numbers I'll do twice over here on the end, 8 minus 10, what kind of 2? Minus 2. All right, so now we're going to the empowering order of operations here. This is the one where you have to distribute through the innermost parentheses, then get out of the brackets, and then get out of the curly Q. So what I want to do first on this one, go ahead and multiply through the 2. This is one of the toughest order of operation problems with variables you'll perform. So the curly Q's is like parentheses, all right? So watch your steps here. Multiplying the 2 through, we're going to have 2A minus 10B, and then we are now out of parentheses inside this first bracket. Minus the second bracket distributing, we're going to have 2 times 2A plus B is 4A plus 2B plus 3, close bracket, close curly Q's. So boy, this is a distribution problem here with all kinds of goodies in it. Now we want to distribute to get out of the uh, brackets here. Now notice there's no number in front of the second bracket. So we're going to put one here, and then we can go ahead and distribute the 4 through. So we're going to have negative 3, a distribution problem here. Our sign rule's going great. 8a minus 40b. Now distributing the 1 in here, or the negative 1, because that was a minus sign, so watch your signs. You're going to have minus 4a minus 2b minus 3. So that negative changed all the signs in that brackets. All right, so now we can go ahead and collect like terms in here, put our A's together. How many? Four. All right, B's minus 40 minus 2 is minus 42B minus 3. And then we can go ahead and run that negative 3 through. So we're going to end up with a negative 12A plus, let's see here, 6, 126B plus 9. All right, so in closing, remember what it takes to succeed in mathematics. Practice enough to become proficient. Keep all those materials organized and don't leave gaps by missing or skipping lessons because math builds from topic to topic. Stay motivated, stay focused, pay attention to detail, and always feel you can succeed. You may be surprised with the results. Take care and we'll see you next time.